Hey everybody, I am Omega. Welcome back to the Day Night Show. My just casting with me tonight will be Mr. Ghost Gambit. How are you doing good, sir? Very good. Very good. Glad to hear it. Streaming and observing, as always, is our everybody's favorite co-caster on here. It's Zero Lambda. Hello! Hey. I'm alive. It's alive. I am yes, alive. I am not dead. Basically, guys, at the end of the day, you could probably just say maybe we should shouldn't have tried to schedule things on Mother's Day, and it's too late to do anything about that, so we're casting anyway. It happens. Whatever. We had some delays over here. It is time now for uh, Covert Muffin versus Fade, number three. So this is a best of five, presuming that's what you guys want it to be. Yeah. 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 So, what I would like from you guys, as always, race, rank, region, and then finally, um, hmm. Something you're looking forward to in Legacy of the Void. You can, can be as broad as the campaign or as specific as, I want to use this ability. Doesn't matter to me. Start with Fade. Uh, race, I play Terran currently, but I also play Protoss sometimes. Uh, rank, uh, Diamond on North America, and almost, almost Diamond on Europe. Nice. Almost. Um, region, North America, mainly, and Europe. I play on Europe sometimes. Yeah, not really Korea, because latency is horrible. Sure, sure. And looking forward to in Legacy of the Void, I just want to try stuff out and like figure out how to all-in people. Yes! <laughs> people are like, oh, it's impossible. I'm like, no. There's, a way. There's always a way. There's always a way. <laughs> So your your practice sessions are going to be amazing, though. You'll have, like, 50 games in one hour. Yeah. Yes. That's actually... Oh, that's going to be crazy. Nah, it won't be 50. It would, still, it would be, like, 15, but still, that's really, really fast. Yeah. Hmm. I'll be dream of that now. Um, but yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And for certain, of course, there are. Or, you know, they'll redefine the definition of a rush to a specific time. Yeah. Whatever. They'll exist. Covert Muffin. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm Covert Muffin. Um, first, I'd like to start with the poem. Uh, roses are red, violets are blue, fate is colorless, and so is his poop. Um, so my goal with these poems this evening is to crush uh, fate's hope and dreams for winning this match tonight. Uh, I've got two more, so we'll be sure to get those, some of them in game, some of them not, because we're on a tight schedule. Um, I play all three races. I'm bad at all three races. Um, currently, I'm in plat because I don't play ladder, but um, I pretty much win... Uh, most games versus uh, Platinum, so I probably should be in Diamond, but I just don't play games. Um, and tonight I'll probably be playing uh, mostly Protoss, but I also have some Zerg and Terran up my sleeve I'd, I'd love to share with you guys. But uh, yeah, so in terms of Legacy of the Void, I'm really excited for the economic changes that they're making, where you start with a ton of workers and also mineral patches are mined out really quick. Uh, I think it's going to bring a lot of new aspects to the game, where early tech uh, bizarre tech choices in Harvest Worm that were thought uh, to be undoable will now be doable, like early ghost plays and stuff like that. Um, so I'm really excited to see sort of uh, what people come up with. And of course, I'll definitely be on the forefront of coming up with some crazy, bizarre plays. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, it'll be fun to see what people do with that. I mean, yeah. the carrier rush is going to be a viable thing again. Kind of in, the, in the way that the battle cruiser rush is, and I'm excited to see that happen. So, that's, yeah. that's kind of like up there in my mind. Yeah. Um, all right, then. Let's move on to map vetoes. Usual process, as always. I have the, uh, I have the map pool up on my screen. So, rock, paper, scissors. Uh, fate went paper, cover it went rock. No! Yes! <laughs> yes! No! Fade's initial, it seems like Covert's initial nine game with poems seems to have not worked in his favor. That's why I have three poems. What would you like to do, Fade? Uh, for, uh, I want to veto first. Okay. And yes! First, I want to get Inferno out. Just, you know, just like, gone. Sometimes people, like, sometimes everybody gets what they want. That's this not always. one one noob tries to fade one sexy muffin waits there one noob fades to death uh we're getting rid of cactus valley 
Nice. That was a haiku, by the way. It's five seven five scheme. Yeah, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sorry, what did you, what did you say though, Covert? <laughs> Uh, get rid of Iron Fortress. We're not playing on that map today. Okay. I mean, no, I'm sorry, Cactus Valley. I want to play on Iron Fortress. Get rid of Cactus Valley. Cool. So okay. sorry. Would you like to remove Iron Fortress? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Can I change my first one from Inferno to Iron Fortress? No. No. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Mind games. Uh, so I pick first, right? Yeah, okay, so... Uh, expedition, I guess, first. Okay. Okay, second, we're going to do Echo. Mm -hmm. uh, third, Bonnie. All right. Um, next is Iron Fortress. Sounds good. And then the last one would be Coda. I don't know yeah. why I was waiting for somebody to say that. Yeah. <laughs> boss will be our first map. For good, good, good. And we are essentially set to go, so let's go ahead and do that. Wish you guys both good luck, and we'll see you again after the games. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. Ghost, how you doing? I am reeling from those bombs. Don't worry, I'm sure he has more. I, I'm sure he does. Yes, I caught, he caught me off guard one of those two. I'm like, wait, what did you veto? Like, oh, crap. <laughs> not paying attention. But, uh... But, now yeah, that's covered for you. He has, he has a very interesting personality. I'm As really always. looking forward to seeing him casting with Manbon, because they both have very interesting personalities. That's going to be crazy. And now Manbon's like, was that a compliment? I don't know, Manbon, was it? I'm not answering that question. It's a mystery. you got to figure it out for yourself. I know he's in the chat right now. So I'm going to take taking my opportunities where I can take him. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think? Of, what kind of coffee do you like, out of curiosity? No random question at all. But... Uh, I don't drink much coffee, but when I do, I like... Uh... Like, really dark roast, like, pretty much if you sniff it, it's going to wake you up. Cool. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. It has to be strong at the very least, though. I'm personally one of those people that I will drink it, like, black or with so much sugar and creamer in it that it tastes like you're drinking an ice cream. And I'm, I'm kind of okay with it either way. I, say, I, I can only drink it black. I've tried the sweet stuff, and it's just, it, it's got to be black. Okay. Black sense. and preferably South American. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I will agree that there are some there are some uh, blends of black coffee that are just like there's no way to improve them. They're just perfect. They're nice when you find them though. Dude, I love being weird, says Ben, but I didn't call you weird, I called you first. <laughs> the stream is quiet. Uh it's the same as it's always been. I'm not certain. <laughs> Okay, Manbon, perhaps you should not worry about that at all. Or I should scooch up to the mic a bit. Okay. Anyway, starting us off here in the bottom left part of the map, it is our yellow Protoss player from the same clan I'm in, Swanky's Aid. Your turn, Ghost. Uh, and it's my turn. I totally dropped it. And in the top right corner, we have our purple Protoss player, DayJ's Covert Muffin. Yeah. DayJ Clan, actually one of the few remaining uh, Day Night Clans that are actually really active, I think. Um, Ladder Clan's gotten a little quieter these days. The uh... Yeah. I haven't I was... seen the Nine Clan in forever. I, I was in Ladder Clan. But it was just nothing really happened, so Weird. I switched to my clan, which is Life Through the Bands. Life Through the Bands? Yeah. Oh, is that like a music one? I, I have no idea what exactly it stands for, but we do a ton of clan wars and things like that. Practice nice. uh, 1v1 with observation, things right. of that nature. 
Well, for anybody who's uh, never done a lot of StarCraft, there's there's something you always check for when you're scouting a Protoss player, even when you are a Protoss player. The first thing you do is you go into his main base and you say, how many pylons does he have? There's a couple different contingency plans that you have here. If you see no pylons, um, the following thought process is, oh, that's not good. Never it's either two procs getting you or it's can rush. Most cases. As it is in the situation where there's case forge and cannons. Most likely coming soon. Yep. 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 Here they yep. go. There we go. This is a cannon rush time. Boxing himself in. Does he have With enough room to put down a cannon? He has not put down a cannon yet. Those are all pylons. I wonder if he's doing that just to delay, or if he. Oh, he wants to get one up and then put one on the low ground, use it to cover the high ground cannons. Oh, he has enough room back there. I completely miscalled that. But to continue the thought from before, if you see one pylon and you passed 17, 18 supply, they might be proxying something else, like oracles or whatever. That thought is now completed. This is a very scary situation for Cover Muppin now. Like, once there, his cannons get this far, you can't really stop it. No. Especially where he's got them. I mean, there's just no good way to really beat these. He's got one in the mineral line, one down on the low ground. Well, can't work. Yeah, for anybody who um, might not necessarily be aware, we had a player by the name of Prinap who, when he started in this, was like, plat. He's now Grandmaster doing this, primarily. And yeah, that's the exact kind of tactic he would use. Cannon on low ground and everything. Got one stalker out of oh. Covert Muffin. He got the Stalker out, and he's running across the map. He doesn't have enough minerals to throw down another Nexus. He's got a couple more probes uh, just continuing to pack up away here. And frankly, that's all he really needs to do. Back home, what kind of defenses does Fate have? We have uh, literally nothing. nothing. Okay, so this we could actually turn to a stalemate. Oh, hold on. What do you think? Uh, it depends on how long these four probes back at Covert Base are able to keep mining. If they can keep mining long enough to pump something else out, then I think Covert has this. Wow. Because with that Stalker, huge advantage with the Stalker. Yeah, th this is going to end up killing the remainder of Fade's economy, and he... unfortunately he's got it adequately defended now, and I don't think the rate that this is going... You know what? I'm not going to try to predict this. We're actually in a situation right now where it comes down a little bit to the micro of both players. Like this move right here from Fade, he's just taking one probe and he's picking away at the guys that are mining. That could end up... Ah, not... I like that. I like that one probe. Gold's a good choice. <laughs> and then the gold. I, he also had a probe up at one of the potential thirds. Thought he might drop it up there. Yeah, this base is forfeit, as is the tech tree. Recover nothing. He still does have a single stalker, and that stalker is going to execute some very banshee like behaviors. Hang out on the edge of the base right now. Peck at what he can. The stronger economy is most certainly for fade, though. Not much with those cannons. Next is getting ready to come, come down. Yep. There it goes. So now their probes have nothing to do but hold their gold and wait. Time to watch a single stalker's kite a zealot. Not the most exhilarating thing. This is the kind of thing you do in the unit tester, actually. Every now and again. And the little fun arcade maps that people put together. Or if you're like me, when you get stuck in the ladder in a situation like this. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you learn on the fly. Because <laughs> well, that's the fun of playing random. Well, Covert's going to be able to remine up here, catch up at least in terms of resources pretty quickly, but he's going to be far behind in terms of uh, tech quite a while. We have the uh, Cybernetic score actually already halfway done for Fade. And I think pretty much all he has to do is go for a gateway attack. Pretty much. And there's, there's not much. Maybe a couple more gateways that I'll take out that base pretty quick. So you know, I have to double check. What do you what do you play on ladder again? I play Terran mainly North American, but then I started doing random on European server. Oh, how's that going? It is 
going horribly, but it's so much fun. Nice. <laughs> it, that that is my blow off steam because I really don't care account where I just have so much fun. And then North America is where I try hard, get really frustrated, and then end up back on Europe. Nice. <laughs> well, uh, Covert Muffin denying any sort of expansion. Yeah, but expansion a... information. He knows that Covert isn't really aware of uh, where he actually put that nexus down. And he needs to keep that secret, really, I think, as long as he can. Yeah. The, the stalker must remain alive. Warp gate on the way for Fade. Yeah. Nah, and this is pretty logical. You just push that. There's Chrono Boost in the units. Get this guy out of your base. I belong here. <laughs> the question is, will that, will that stalker get chased all the way back to the uh, new base. Uh, unfortunately, those those probes actually have gold minerals in them, so now he doesn't even really need to scout it. He knows. So, no. Oh, you have that. Okay. We're looking at the resources being pulled in. Covert Muffin... Uh, whoops, I am not looking at the... Where is it? There it is. Um, actually... You know what? I'm not certain this is actually functioning correctly. Never mind. I don't know what I'm doing. We'll leave it to zero. I'm sure he's put it up on the screen. I would imagine they're not too far off, though. And he's found the base. Two stalkers and a zealot should clean this up rather easily. But the probes don't work. Oh, he's going to get up to a mothership core. Oh, man. Huh. There's the three additional gates for fade. Gonna have a photon overcharge, but oh, this is frustrating. But there's a stock. What wins, militia core or stock? It's kind of looking like a stock. Yep. Yeah. Oh, hurry up, get out of there. Ooh. Totally opposite relationship of the mothership to literally everything, by the way. Except like a tempest and a carrier. Mm -hmm. Maybe a battle cruiser. I think it kills pretty much everything else in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Not a thing you ever see. Again, this is that's unit tester knowledge, as I like to call it. That's not useful in any serious yeah. situation. <laughs> I lost to a single mothership core on a Banshee Rush that got scouted. Oh. My last time on ladder. Actually, he was proxy pylon warping in uh, stalkers and saw my Banshee fly right, right across it. Yeah, and here we go. Now there's five stalkers at the front. There is not enough. Well, there's barely enough energy for both on overcharge. And here comes the warpins. This photon overcharge, though, I think is really the the only thing keeping uh, Covert alive. Unfortunately, he's down at 3-gate and his opponent's at 4, so the longer this goes on, the bigger army that Fade's simply going to have. If he fights under the Photon Overcharge, though, that might end up... Ooh, nice. Nice usage of time right there, but he is he's going to force a fight under here, and I think this actually gives Covert Muffin and maybe slightly better odds. But, uh, in any case, it doesn't look like it's going to matter. Tons of probes going down, the army's essentially gone, Photon Overcharge ends, he's dancing in front of Covert Muffin. <laughs> Demonstrating that the poems, in fact, did not shatter his mindset. Fade is fine. It looks like he's going to be picking up game one here shortly. Meanwhile, I'm half expecting Covert to actually type in another poem. Well, Covert has dropped a pylon to extend the game. Up the top of the <laughs> Oh boy. Dropped another one. And here comes the third. Oh, he's gone down to 69 minerals. Well, sounds <laughs> bet you that's intentional. <laughs> that was for your poems. Okay. I. Oh man. Okay, so. We're not blind, guys, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and say it any other way. Oh yeah, COVID's dead. He's yep. dead. He's only prolonging now, inevitable. Yeah, these guys are friends. He's dicking around. That's what's happening. All said, he's taking the opportunity to take his 
three game break. Now, of course, that's still contingent on Fade. He still has the option of taking a break if he wants. Kind of hoping we might see a poem at the end. But... I'll read it if he puts one in. Okay, and then the thing is, Fade, yeah, he actually is pretty known for doing a lot of all-ins, and I, I can actually talk about a little bit what he meant when he said that when he used to all-in all the time. He used to do a lot of Blink Stalker all-ins, and I think he watched Brynf do it and instead of doing Reaper stuff. But I know he can, he's capable of a lot more than that now. That is for sure. Well, he got a really good positioning with the, uh, with the three pylons blocking in his probe. Was still enough room for one cannon, and that's that's what really kind of sealed the deal. Yep, uh, it that's a tough situation to break out of. I mean, and Covert got very close to doing it though. If he was able to pull off a little bit more damage against uh, Fade's probe line in that counterattack, I think it might have gone a little better for him. Uh, there, there was just too much left over for Fade. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think if he hadn't remembered to get that pylon down when he did, because yeah. Notice that that probably should have happened slightly sooner, in fact, even than that. But yeah, if, if he had just forgotten about the possibility of a counterattack and didn't put that pylon down, then that would have been probably it. Second game is going to be on Echo, Echo Letter Edition. My one of my first views of this map. I well, I looked at them online on Blizzard when they came out and I have to say I love the map pool this season makes me sad that I have not been able to play ladder more uh, because these all of these maps are just just outstanding this map is pretty fun in fact did you play any Cloud Kingdom at all when I was on the map pool? Yes the overall structure of, of this Kingdom. map is kind of similar like if you look at it and turn it mm-hmm I like that they. I like that they continue to do that. Like they continue to use the basis for Cloud Kingdom and then just alter it in small ways. Yeah. Well, and I like this map pool has very unique maps, uh, and very unique maps are just a, a lot, a lot more fun. Fade is trying the mind games in the chat. He's having a good time with his his uh, <laughs> control V button. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just like any other map pool. It has this one or two oddities, specifically for no pool. I think it's the one that, like, it feels the weirdest, honestly, of all of them. I And, I, you know, I've talked with a lot of people about Inferno pools, and, and the, the main thing is it's just got no good third. Yeah. It kind of encourages rushes, but it's really large, and you can't really scout too good. So it's like, it's, it's always an awkward combination. I've I've rarely rarely seen it played on uh, in pro games. Yeah, it's not one that they go for a lot unless it's like a best of seven. Looks like we're loading up game two now. Uh... Loading up into Echo. This is one of those maps that whenever I see a Legacy of the Void match played on it, I get a little annoyed because that yellow color right now with that bug they have with the minimap makes everything oh, look yeah. transparent and then you can't see anything in their bases and it's like Ugh. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for that to be improved <laughs> but I, I do love the race center section slight low ground in the middle yes very cool map very very cool map All right, in the top left of the map here, we have our yellow Terran player this time. It is I Am Fade. I'm Swanky. And in the bottom right, staying Protoss, our purple Protoss, DJ's Covert Muffin. So here's the thing. Uh, Covert Muffin is actually a random player for not a Protoss player, for what people think. <laughs> Also, Fade is letting us know he really wants to make sure that you guys at home saw what he was control v earlier. <laughs> Covert is deciding to, to execute execute poetry.exe. <laughs> there he goes. Fade spots yummy cheese. Admiral Ackbar not there. 
Now breath smells like poop. Hmm? I think that was a haiku. It was. It's a haiku it's... with a disconnected thought it, it... process, but they likes it. <laughs> it's enjoyable. Seems to favor the haikus for poetry. Yes, he does. All right, we got barracks and gas. But yeah, Bro. as I was trying to say, he, he does actually go for random. But he does it in a different way than most. He doesn't hit the random button. He just yeah. He'll either roll a dice and go with that, or he'll just decide to play different races. Yeah, a lot of times, even though I play random on Europe, I will just rotate through the races just because, you know. Otherwise, you end up getting like you know five matchups at Zerg because that's just the way the algorithm was working that day. Yeah, it's also intensely frustrating for your opponent, like. In a lot of cases, they'll just rush you because there isn't really a safe opening. Well, and that's that's why I always announce because I, I just play random. That's good. I just play random for the fact of trying different races, doing crazy things. I always and, appreciate it when people do that because I'm like, I don't want to have to blink stock or rush your <laughs> Darren, and I don't want to try and risk that you might be Zerg. <laughs> well, yeah, that's just you know, like, <laughs> I'm not trying to be sneaky by playing Terran or by playing random. So, there's well, no reason. They're still having a conversation. I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah, something about Selena Gomez. Yep. At the Reaper opening. Yeah, here we go. Eight. Question would be interesting to see what comes next. It actually looks like he's going for a standard opening. Fairly standard from Covert as well. I'm not see. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything odd on Covert's angle. This is the opening you pretty much have to use if you suspect that your opponent's going to do anything with Reapers. Because if you do not have this Chrono Boosted Stalker out, then life gets kind of awful. Yep. However, if a... Uh, and this is just a mental note for anybody out there playing Protoss. If the Reaper hits you before now, it means that he proxied it. And you should yes. probably build more Stalkers. <laughs> oh, because there's wow, I'm amazed that thing got away. Because there's either a lot more Reapers coming, or Marines are quickly following. Yeah. yeah. Basically, that won't get in... If that gets into your base at the three-minute mark, there's a problem. Huge problem. It might actually be like 3.15 is when it comes out. I had that happen once. It just like popped up into my base like 3.30 and I went, oh, oh, that's what this is going to be. Okay. That's what going, I'm going to do. It. going very standard here. Oh, Cover getting aggressive. Bunker at the front here with some Marines. There's no way he can do much. He no. does see the expansion though, which is helpful knowledge. It's a good placement of the bunker. Good timing on it too. Just as the Reaper got back, finished up. This is very aggressive use of his units early on. This is not something that a lot of Protoss players will actually do uh, below that. Where, where are you going, Mothership Core? Looks like he wants to go and poke at the, the Mineral Lion, hit a couple things, see his overall buildings. It's actually very easy to get in and out with this thing. This early on. <laughs> Now they're having a good time. It's always good. That is the HF part of GLHF. Have fun. Expansion going down for Covert as well. Looks like at least now, no funny business as of right now. Yeah, Covert had his uh, units placed out uh, pretty well there to catch that. And it looks like I don't think that's going to get away this time. It does pick up on one less scout, though. He will be remembered by this particular installation of the Terrans, presuming they survive the rest of this game. <laughs> His sacrifice was largely not in vain, I'm sure. Yeah, so one thing that's going to be interesting about casting Legacy of the Void is we're not going to have this slow build-up. No. We can talk about whatever. It's, it's <laughs> literally racks at minute and a half, and we're yeah. going. And if somebody cannon rushes, you'll know. Right you'll away. Know immediately. Probe leaves the base. You'll type GLHF and then see a pylon. Yeah. Actually, the pylon will probably go up at about 45 seconds in your base. <laughs> it's kind of insane. I tried, like, when they announced the economy model, I'm like, when do you build the pylon for this? And I'm like, oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> That'll be the shortest series ever that I get to cast. It's going to be a print F1 Legacy of the Wood. It's going to it's going to be over in like 10 minutes or less. Maybe with a little poke across the map. Probably won't get much done. Nope. Too much there. 
think the last time these guys played, uh, Faye did go for this kind of earlier attack, and he, he tried to build up his forces for just a big two base all in. And uh, Covert held it very nicely with his all warp in and some really good force fields. And it looks like this time, though, Fade wants to go for that again. And this, uh, I think, I think Covert's picked up on that by now. Yep. We got Stim almost done. Got the, got the starport building. Probably see Medivax pop out. He's currently boosting out an Immortal, which is usually an indication that uh, the Protoss player actually does suspect an attack coming. Immortals are, like, really good defend now units when it yeah. comes to these rushes, but they are not big things that will cause your opponent to do something different. Like, if they see an Immortal, they're going to be like, okay, cool, I need some more units. No, it if just they makes see me a sad. If they see a Colossus, they're going to be like, get the Vikings. Yeah, as, as a Terran, seeing an Immortal makes me sad because it means I'm going to have to work a little harder. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It means that the Protoss knows what you're doing. Essentially. <laughs> Essentially it's like, yeah. oh, you're not just poking my ramp. Definitely not. Okay. We got the Twilight Council driving down for cover as well. <clears throat> and nothing unusual here from Fade. Uh, well, okay, I don't really like. I think he's trying to bait him into coming up the ramp. Again, the force fields are pretty key to holding this off. If you get, if you fight the Terran out in an open area with this, he can just blow up all your sentries, and your life will be coming yeah. incredibly bad. Yeah, Fade definitely going for bio as he's floating the factory all the way across the map. A wonderful mechanical overlord. <laughs> Moves slightly slower than an overlord, if that's even possible. Is it like over old overlord speed? You think? Probably more or less. Yeah, yeah, probably around Brood War overlords. No, they actually got sped up, I think, between Wings and Hots. If I remember. Oh, did they? Yeah, a yeah, tiny bit. I mean, it's barely relevant, but it did help. Is that the? Uh... Ooh, did he see the? Did he actually see the Metavax? Yes, he sh well, the uh, Phoenix has attacked the Metavax, but it no. doesn't necessarily mean. Uh, yeah, I think he's being a little bit hesitant with this. He's gonna. I guess he's just trying to get the photon overcharge out. There's the second one, though. Uh oh. Army control is getting a little bit away from fate here as some of his marauders get a little bit too brave. Looks like this can this kind of soft contain we have going is going to continue though. I don't I don't really see much else happening for a while here. And then Fade hasn't made any indications that he wants to go for a third. I don't even see a third command center in his base that you normally have for SCV production. No, just adding on another barracks. There it is. Okay, so he's yeah, this this command center is an indication that he's he's kind of acknowledging he can't do anything here. Building widow mines out of the trans transplanted factory. Yep. And it looks like Covert wants to go up in a storm before going into Colossus. He might not even escape entirely. Well, by having over at the front, Fade's been trapped in an extremely awkward angle. He's been forced to take all the DPS from the cells rather than kite them away. He's pick up and save some of them. And uh, he's going to back off. No more force fields or guardian shield left in the army, but it's a little bit too much. So. Too, too many units. Archons. Get some beef in the army. It always gets me, as a Terran player, going against Protoss. Wow, pulling, pulling the SCVs. Yeah, you pretty much have to do this at this point. I'm not sure if it's going to be quite enough. At the very least, he's going to take some pretty serious losses to this. Yeah. SCVs go down. The army does more not survive. He needed yeah. to win that, I think, by a pretty large mark there we go. For, that to, for that to have been worth it, too. So. Yeah. Rough one. Oh yeah. yeah what, always, oh. what always gets me, Terran versus Protoss. Protoss gets those get those weapon upgrades so quickly. You really have to be on top of your upgrades as Terran in order to really be effective with the army. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But good game. Good game overall. Fairly standard. But there's nothing wrong with standard 
standard is good. Absolutely. Looks like Covert's going to have a short break. So while we do that, uh, while we wait for him to take that, uh, let's learn a little bit more about you, Ghost. Sure. But uh, I'm curious, yeah, what kind of games do you like to play other than uh, StarCraft, obviously? Uh, well, I play pretty much anything made by Blizzard. Uh, I agree with that. I also uh, play I, anything by Blizzard. I have, um, uh, I don't know. I mean, I... I I play first-person shooters some. I, I like games with a good story. Uh, I can I can sacrifice gameplay elements for games that have a really good driving storyline uh, that really keeps you sucked in. Mm -hmm. um, I also enjoy turn-based strategy games. I've been playing a lot of Civ Five recently. Um, just those long, you know, long thinking games are, are a lot of fun. Um, and then. You know, throw in random, you know, just the random game that I see played here and there. I like pretty much anything, honestly, but real-time strategy and turn-based strategy are my uh, two biggest. Starcrafts, obviously out of my favorite. Yeah, out of curiosity on that note, because I started playing, I started messing with a couple other um, RTS games recently. Mm -hmm. um, have you tried Warhammer 40k at all? Like the uh, compute the RTS that they made a little while ago. I have not tried that. Um, I had a friend in college who we played Starcraft two together a lot. Mm -hmm. He actually played the physical board game, Ooh, the, nice. the Warhammer 40k. So he got me a little. A little bit into that, just kind of, you know, interesting into the world of, of miniatures and things like that. But I have not played that. Uh, I played things like Age of Empires. They had a Star Wars RTS at some point that I played. Um, you know, I'll, I'll try any RTS once. Nice. Providing finances are there and all that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's kind of like my biggest thing. Like looking at the Warhammer universe, I've always thought. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to be into this, but man, the money is not good. Yeah. Hey, you do not have that kind of cash. But, however, on the other side of that coin, um, have you ever played any of the Total War franchise? I have not played Total War. Okay. They're making a Total War Warhammer game. Interesting. Not 40k, mind you. Just like yeah. original Warhammer. Mm -hmm. Which is essentially medieval fantasy. Kind of. <laughs> With magic. And giant yeah. eyes. It's I honestly I look at it and I thought, you know, that looks fun. I hope that's good. Yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> Cause the Total War franchise, for any of you who haven't uh, looked into it, is essentially a hyper realistic simulation of a lot of medieval battles. Medieval Roman times, the Shogunate era, that kind of thing is what they typically do. It's a lot of so, fun to watch. It's yeah. It's a lot it's actually very entertaining. Um, it's kind of a fusion of an RTS and Civ in a lot of yeah. ways. Yeah. But it's worth checking out, and I love the idea of applying that formula to Warhammer. I think that could be a lot of fun. <clears throat> and hey, if this works out, maybe we'll try it with other properties. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? It's, uh, it's always fun to see physical board games brought to the virtual world where life is a little easier and, in the end, a little cheaper. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, I can imagine a, a tabletop version of actual 40k though would be like an online version of that tabletop system. Oh yeah, it would destroy the sales they have for the physical one probably. Oh yeah, so my, I can't my, imagine my, that my. happening anytime soon, which makes me no. sad. Though I mean, I don't think a lot of the guys who play the actual Warhammer 40k tabletop are going to give up their passion, yeah. which is buying and painting these models. These for miniatures. Sure. For sure. For sure. To go with someone else's rendition on a computer. Oh, it wouldn't eliminate it. it. would probably shrink it. So once again, at the bottom of the map, currently tied with his opponent, it is our yellow Terran. Swanky's I Am Fade. 
And up at the top of the map, uh -oh. we, uh-oh, we have lag. Oh, and we're back. Game closed. Did Fade's internet die? This has been happening to him at random. It's very possible. Yo! This covert muffin. Don't fade, Fade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were thinking it. I will admit. Just kidding about the color. <laughs> Aww. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, we'll, we'll find out what this is about shortly. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I played a, a decent number of RTSs as well um, in the past, including some that were not so good, like Star Wars Force Commander, which is surprisingly still sitting on my desk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I think it's. I, I just keep it there as a reminder of that Game things can go it. very wrong. Yes, they can. In RTS. Very quickly. For certain. And by the way, no, that game wasn't garbage, but it wasn't really that fun. It's kind of boring. Yeah. I don't recommend it. If you really want to play Star Wars RTS, look for Empire at War, because at least it has good space battles. Yes. It's a good game. And to continue with the introductions, at the top of the map, <laughs> Purple, playing Zerg, now that we've come back from our lag. It's DJ's Covert Muffin. <laughs> oh, that's horrible, Bert. <laughs> I'm not repeating that joke on stream. <laughs> then I will still kind of laugh at it, though. But anyway. Uh, the... Yeah, I I know what, as far as RTSs go. Ugh, come on. Come on, internet. Uh, 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 that's scary. Maybe. It really is. Okay. Our yeah. Skype call has not been like freaking out. Is it is it freaking out on your end? No. Okay, no, it's Skype not me. Calls, uh, it's not my fault. It's, it's not, not my, my fault. <laughs> All right. But uh I know I played a lot of Age of Empires too, you know, growing up mm -hmm. between that and Brood War. And then they came out with Age of Empires three. And it wasn't bad. It was Weirdly enough, good. I didn't have like I didn't own most RTSs when I was a kid. All of my friends did. I never owned StarCraft. I borrowed it from a friend of mine like six times. I owned it when I got older, and I made up for it by buying essentially three or four copies yeah. at different times. Because I, I kept losing them or giving them to people. <laughs> Cover Muffin, forgetting what map he's on. No, I'm not going to say anything. Okay, tempting though. Tempting. Anyway, he... Um, but yeah, I borrowed, I borrowed StarCraft from a friend of mine, played through most of that, I borrowed Warcraft 3 from the same friend, <laughs> I borrowed Age of Empires from a different friend, um, one of those guys got me Empire at War, which was a fun game, or just, was it just called Empire? I can't remember, it was insane, it was like Age of, em it was like Age of Empires 2, but uh, it had the advancing technology into the modern era, and it was absurdly complex. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a fun game, but it, it went over my head very, very, very easily. Yeah, growing up, I stuck almost exclusively to StarCraft games. Or, StarCraft, Star Wars games. Because yes. let's just face it, late 90s, early 2000s were like the prime of amazing Star Wars games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, did you play any of the Flight Sims, by the way? Any of the what? The Flight Sims, like TIE Fighter, X-Wing. Yes, I did. X-Wing ah, okay. was actually one of the first, uh, first ones I played. And then so my all-time favorite games of all time forever and always will be KOTOR 1 and KOTOR 2. Yeah, those games are awesome. Um, you can get mostly updated versions of them on GOG that function, by the way, on PC. Yeah. For anybody who you hasn't also, tried that. You can also sure. purchase them in the Mac App Store as well. Yes. I can't believe that works, by the way, apparently on phone. <laughs> or, like, tablet and phone. Yeah. It, like, actually is functional. I'm like, what? Okay. Yeah, no, I know it was it was mainly ported for, uh, for the Max. Holy Zerglings! Okay, that's got to be what Fade's just thinking because he's like, "What? There's also four Zerg. Like, whatever Covert wants to do, he should probably send these six Zerglings to join it." Yeah. Yeah. So this is looking like the setup for a Baneling bust, and honestly speaking, at least that's what Fade seems to think it is because there goes the Ultra Wall. The ultra wall. We got a widow mine on the way. But the thing is, there's no, there's no bandling nest up. There's not that I can see anywhere. So it's starting to 
Honestly, this I think is provoking a bit of an overreaction out of Cobra, uh, out of Fade, rather. However, with the scouting information that Fade has, he has no idea whether or not there is a yeah. Bailey nest. He so. brings chest to do this, and this widow mine will do it. I mean, if he runs up the ramp and tries to break in, okay, yeah, Covert is trying to send this message, and he's going <laughs> for a third. The mine s- games. Yeah, and that Reaper's like, some smells fishy, boss. Oh, the widow mine's like, get off my door. <laughs> <laughs> you don't belong here. Read the sign. It says no Zerglings. <laughs> the Reaper will find a whole lot of nothing. No, yeah, he's checking back here. He really should be checking for the third, though. This isn't going to show him a whole lot back here. In fact, it looks like he's going to lose it. No, get that out of there. What? Oh, he somehow saves it. Uh, he saves it and because he won for a Yeah. <laughs> and runs into, drops the scan, sees nothing. It still hasn't spotted the third. So now we have a star, uh, Stargate, Starport. How is it that when I'm staring at Protoss, I want to say Starport? When I'm staring at Terrans, I want to say Stargate. Why, all Brain? Why are you call, doing this? All I want to do is call all units Terran units. <laughs> Look, because it's the Star Building. The Star Building has been thrown down. <laughs> the one that builds the flying things. Yes. Anyway, there's a Starport <laughs> over there, and it looks like Fade's moving up into the next stage of the. Uh, Probably the same build as he was doing last time, as we have a couple of reactors going down. So we got three little mines at the front, protecting the space from anything, any little bugs that might try and run up this ramp. Sick. Got one one dropping for fate. He should probably get to an expansion a little bit sooner than last time, though. I don't, I don't know if he wants to. Yeah. I w- the all in tactics. I'm not sure they will have been working so good. There we go for him. He's dropped his command center. I was just about to say this is about the time that I would like a third. There we go. Two more barracks on the back end of that. So I think Fade has pieced together that the mind games were real. And that there is no banning bus coming. Mind games were real. Still no no banning nest on the map. Instead, just getting upgrades for our Zerg player. Upgrades, getting lair. Upgraded Zerglings can be a scary thing. Um, Especially upgraded speed links. I mean, yeah, it limits his ability to really move out around the map without using things like Metavax, but uh, he does actually have, I think, as well, some opportunity to get some work done with um, with the drop play. Cobra Muffin seems to be anticipating this, throwing down some spine crawlers that is uh, natural. A spore crawler behind the mineral line of the main. Mm-hmm. A spore crawler at the natural, just to make sure no little mine drops can come and do any funny business. And it looks like we're just going to be chilling for a little bit until these uh, players have built up their next time. Yep, doing some creep spread. One single zergling, just out of range of a little mine. There's a spire. Waiting for that third. So, yeah, when you see a spire at this point with... With Zergs. In a lot of cases, it's not always going to mean that they're going straight for Mutas. It might actually mean that they want to do a Muta switch after Roach Hydra. So you see some players go down that tech path. In this case, however, we have Lings on the map. He's throwing down a Baneling Nest. There is the Spire on the way. So it looks like we're going to be seeing the classic kind of Scarlet answer to the Pult style of play, which is a Ling Bane Muta. And... 32... 32, 38 Lings in production now. Yeah, Fate's being very slow by getting this expansion out here, and I think this might end up really getting them in a lot of trouble. By the way, drops are happening on that. Uh, that one's already been held off. This one at the back is present, but the medevac is so badly damaged, I don't think he's going to be able to escape with these units so well when the anti air finds this uh, drop. Leaves the Widow Mine. Nice, moving up here. He can get some damage on here. Maybe I, should get over. I don't think he's going to get more than that, though. Um. No! Oh, and he escapes. What? How much damage did that have? Has has fourteen health. Nice. The overseer should have seen the little mine. Hopefully, it comes back. And they can kill it off. So the Ooh. sight range for most detecting buildings in this game, like spore crawlers, uh, photon cannons, and turrets, is actually slightly larger than where they can shoot. So, even though it's clearly outside of the attack range of the Spore Crawler, I can't be 100% certain that this Widow Mine is invisible. I think it's just outside the range. 
I, I think it is just outside the visible range. Because otherwise, it probably would have been. It's gonna. Already. I think. No, drop has come back. It's come back with a fresh medevac this time. It's trying to do some damage. We should pick Got these it. guys up or decide to leave though. Fade moving out on the map, using the drop to distract. A big collision in the middle of the map. Uh, Mega Man go What are oh, the widow mines? Widow mines are gonna probably. Whoa, nice pickup. This loses everything. No reaction to the third base under attack. A single zerk. Centrifugal hooks. Nope. Finishing. His reaction is to ignore it and throw down three. Throw down three <laughs> mules. Here come more zerglings to try and mess with base plans. Again, nothing's being done. There goes the marines shooting. But these are almost plus two attack zerglings. Those just get annoying. Okay. That's the thing, like, Zerglings against Marines normally go in the Marines' favor until the Zerglings start getting upgrades. Then they just start not necessarily being super high damage, but annoying nonetheless. Covert Muffin moving out with the Mutas. We have one turret in the mineral line of the natural of fade. Yeah. Uh, Fade's done decent, you know, he's doing a decent job being distracted with this, and unfortunately all he's really done with any of these attacks is kill the army. What he really needs yeah. to do is slow down the economy, and unfortunately that isn't happening here, and I think Covert is just getting a stronger and stronger foothold as long as uh, longer this game goes. A lot of static defenses for Covert, making it harder and harder to deny the fourth base, to take out the third. However, Fade has managed to get up to a third base this time, I think. Fully saturated third base. Uh-oh, here comes the attack. Cover Muffin actually been kind of light on supply for kind of light on for a moment ago. Nice widow mine hits the entire within gone. Took a little friendly fire damage, but now, that's the overall overall nice. <laughs> And that pretty much kinda looks like that's gonna be the start of a kind of a stalemate here for a little while. But Cobra Muffin again, he he still is in this kind of stronger economic position here. He's had his fourth up for a while. He can just rebuild supply it's already back essentially to where he was when that attack started we do have 3-3 finishing up or starting for fade that'll help the there are the overseers nice. okay scan Drop coming down he sees that uh sees that nothing else is really changing and there's a fifth coming Ready for dust off. pretty much the same composition Good yeah. little mine placement there. Yeah, that'll, that'll do another nice hit. Three. Put enough widow mines down and you don't need good hits anymore. Nope. You just need a bunch. Unfortunately, though, the army is just too large. No matter how good those hits are, it's just. Too many Zerglings. Too many Zerglings. Yudas are also becoming a problem. Uh. At least if I can head on to a ball of things, though. He doesn't have any Banelings to help us out. Marines yeah, coming up from a tail oh, there we go. Nice. Got him enough time to kind of split everything up, though. And I think Faye is holding on really well here. His army's yeah, starting to get wave bigger and coming. bigger. Another wave coming for Covert. Oh, no! Bad rally point. A lot of lings are dying for free. Ooh. A lot of banelings. He's actually starting to run into the, the exact same problem a lot of people just have against Paul. Which... The attack goes on and on and on, you win a nice fight here and there, but you don't really do enough damage to the Terran, and he just starts to build up a large and larger force, and he gets close to 3-3, three, three, which is starting to happen here. Yeah. But those family hits are nice enough to turn this around for a bit. Well, Anlin, Anlin, you're producing, if you don't, if you don't hit Terran's production buildings at all, you've really got a problem on your hands, because once we get to this situation, 
We know Zerg can remax quickly, but so can the Terran. Yep. Eight already at 140 supply, Cobra Muffin hanging out at actually about the same number because suddenly, suddenly everything is being produced. Infestation pit going down. He's pretty far away from 3 3, so when this next attack hits, if he waits for the 3 3 to come into play, he's going to have a really nice uh, power advantage. Flyer attacks. Level 2 coming down. Help those mutas up. No, he's hitting just before the Bailings are coming out yet again. Trying to pre split here is. There you go. I'm kind of wondering if he would actually make it in time for that. Uh, good splits. He needs to move forward now. Once he takes this out, which uh, he should take it out. Marines, uh, Mutalist engaging right on top of the Marines. The fifth is dead. He should move on now. Try and take out that fourth. 46 lings in production. It looks like we don't have a lot, a lot, a lot else. As long as Fade doesn't lax too much on his marine production in the back of this, which he is he's, technically supply blocked, but he needs to move these marines up here. He's got no reinforcements for the squad. He does. The, these marines need to be rallied across the map and just keep them coming. Oh, oh it will. The one shows up. I wouldn't mind kind of betrayed the marines there, mostly. That's what they do. <laughs> Widow mines are on their own team, and they always win. Yes. Always. Always. There's that one ridiculous game that happened shortly after HOTS came out where this Terran was about to win. He blows up everything into a bunch of medevacs, flies over these widow mines that had targeted a muta, and it blows up literally all of his medevacs. I don't know. I think I remember that. After which, I think it was Idra who posted on Twitter. It was like, widow mines always end the game one way or the other. <laughs> I thought, you know, that's, that's appropriate. Widow Mines are fun to make in mass, as are Banelings. Well, it looks like we are at the coveted. Uh... This is an. Un... This is actually very unusual. No, sorry, let me get my thoughts in organized mode here. Because <laughs> I am being kind of constantly uh, distracted by the wonderful tasting coffee that is sitting next to me. But. Looks like we are at 2-1 for Fade, which is a little bit of a surprise to me, as Fade has not done particularly well against Cobra Muffin in most of these matches, but it seems that uh, he's tuned things up quite a bit. Well, Terran was really good right there. He didn't fall for the mind games outside of the super wall. He didn't shift dramatically. Just did the little things to try and hold it off just in case. And in the end, Mass Marines usually beats Mass Zergling. Now our next map is going to be Iron Fortress. A map I personally love. I saw it. I saw it in GSL. So happy to see it. I was, I was. Station. I was like slightly miffed that they they put they just put the Zerg symbol where the Horde symbol was though. Yeah. I was like, oh, why? That had such personality. Yeah, it it, it did. But it's an all right map. I I, I think for me personally, it's not. I haven't found the most fun games on it, but um, Protoss perspective, so maybe there's. I think I think I enjoy it because I'm a I'm a macro teching Terran. I can see how it would be good for you. <laughs> and and this is just the map to sit back. You know, not a lot of early forces. Tech up. You know, go go up as far as you want, and then just produce off of four bases and just roll over the other opponent. Which is my style of play. If you've watched any of my show matches, a lot of times it does me in. But it's still fun. Well, I, I mean, it, style. standard styles of play are actually the strongest statistically on ladder. They're the reason that they're called that. But they're only statistically the strongest in the right hands. And, and AKA, if you've trained with them enough... Exactly. Then yes, you can hold off tons of stuff, and they're very, very good. But get it, the road to getting there is very difficult, and like don't discount the road to getting to a good, a good all-in timing either. You have to lose tons of no. games before you get there because you never have enough stuff if you're late. That is true. Basically, the road to victory in StarCraft involves a lot of losing, no matter what you do. Well, with Blizzard striving for about a 50% win rate in all their balances, you're going to lose just about as much as you win. Yes, unless you get to the top. That is a joy that they 
alone can have. <laughs> <laughs> Although to be fair, they don't really do. They don't really want that. They want to be pushed, so they don't. They don't want necessarily to have a seventy percent win rate all the time if it's not in a tournament. Yeah, because they want to get better. So they want to have they want to have their practice partners that can push them and beat them because without them, well, they could be stagnating and somebody else might catch up and win in a tournament, which would be awful for their pers- from their perspective. Especially when the money's on the line. We play for bragging rights. They play for food, essentially. Yes, it's a very different experience. <laughs> Apparently Zero parked his car over his neighbor's driveway, which is why we have been bullshitting for the past couple minutes. (laughs) I was wondering what happened there. (laughs) It's all good, though. How do you not know that you parked in your neighbor's driveway? That's the question. That is a good question. I think it it comes down... (laughs) What's going on this like we went to StarCraft thing? I don't know about that, man. I, I think the uh, the chances of a person accidentally parking their car over the, their neighbor's driveway isn't particularly high, but just in case, we should probably collect more data on it in case there needs to be any changes to the size of driveways with Blizzard. That's true. Yes. We need to add that to the balance map. <laughs> this new balance map includes uh, driveways that are slightly one inch higher on either uh, not higher, one inch larger on the other side, not the side where they meet. There's uh, a lot of players have been wanting for more space between driveways, but we don't think that's exactly necessary. We're, we're attempting to avoid confusion where possible. Yes. However, at times, it is inevitable. However, it would be fun to have fake ramps on a map. <laughs> You, you have two ramps into the main base and you never know which one it's like a it's, it's a random rock placement so on that note have you watched any of the uh shout shoutcraft clan war thing i have not yet no. you should because they have the coolest maps ever <laughs> <laughs> i i did love uh huskies in the league that yeah. was a ton I'll, of fun especially watching you. minerals running all over the map I'll link you to what I'm talking about. It's pretty impressive. They basically, um, apparently Total Biscuit has access to a number of different map makers. And he basically just said, come up with the strangest stuff you can and we'll use it in a tournament. So That's there's no, there's a map, for example, that has rocks at literally every ramp. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a map that has these randomly changing ramps that, not like ramp, like up down ramps, but connection ramps between kind of like islands. Yeah. sort of things and they randomly open and close after certain periods of time go by there's there's another map where you can collapse rocks onto the gold minerals to make them unminable <laughs> like all sorts of cool stuff it's great those sound like my kind of maps yeah basically it's it's definitely a have fun sort of tournament and also one where you get to research cool stuff like there's uh, probably my favorite one has these neutral cannons that you can take with obscene range Oh. That would be fun. You you can use the cannons to like blow up an early drop that's coming at you, or Zerk Wars Nightmare blow up their first Overlord before they can do much with it. Stuff like that. So much fun. All right. In the bottom right part of the map, we have once again our Yellow Terran player currently actually up one game. First time in any of his series against Cobra Muffin, it is Fade. And spawning in the horizontal position, <laughs> oh. our, <laughs> our purple Protoss, who is currently uh, currently trash talking more. He is Mr. Morning Dumps himself, Cobra Muffin. So here's the thing, right? Um, Fade actually is one of the most chill people I've ever seen. I've seen Mm -hmm. him... I mean, I've been casting this guy for, like, a year and a half. I've seen him flip out once. (laughs) Comments like that don't affect him. In fact, they make him do stuff like what you saw where he was just randomly pasting song lyrics in. (laughs) He does that. That's how he responds to and deals with it. In other words, 
it doesn't affect him. He just has fun with it. So yeah. he has an incredibly good mindset for this game. And when he says lol, he, he means it. He's finding this entertaining. Oh, I always find also stuff like this entertaining. Covert just does that to psych himself off. He couldn't care less what oh, yeah. Fate's reaction really is anyway. You got the other pro going out from Covert, trying to find where on earth his opponent is. And if he's going in a clockwise manner, it will take him a while. Because little do they know how close they have spawned. Now I forget. Can can you spawn in any of the four in on this map? Iron yes. Fortress? I'm pretty sure. That's what I thought. I don't think there's restrictions on any of the current four-player maps. Okay. Because um, I I, I kind of liked knowing that it would be a fifty-fifty. Either you'd be yeah. horizontal or you'd be cross. Which map was that? Uh, Deadwing. That was Deadwing. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Deadwing or Fox Trap? One of the two. Oh, Fox shot it might have been. That was a little while ago. Jeez. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it was Deadwing. That was the one in the pool last. They're going to see each other. Two scouts. Pass by. High five. There you go. Because uh, I know people are actually asking about a Death Row versus... Um, her thing will get casted, but it, we are really behind schedule right now. So we are trying to do our best to get these done that are supposed to be happening now. Like we're we're twenty minutes into what is supposed to be the next game's next series slot. That's how far back we are. So if we have time tonight, big if. But if we do, then we'll get to it. If not, we do it tomorrow night or Tuesday night. We'll get to it though. It'll happen fairly soon. Don't worry about it. In any case, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now to resume your regularly scheduled cast. So, okay. I probably missed something just now by looking at the chat. <laughs> well, uh, Fade almost killed the probe that was scouting with two Marines, but it left with just four hit points. Nice. Gotta say that one, keeping that one probe alive actually for a Protoss player, super convenient. I not necessarily say necessary, but it makes your life a lot easier. Because you can drop that pylon. Yes. You can drop that pylon, you don't have to do it later. We have Void Ray coming out here from Covert Muffin. This is actually a pretty interesting choice uh, this early on. Kind of indicates that he might be going for something a little bit more one basey than normal. Because really what you would do with a Stargate if you wanted to go for more of an expansion-centered play is you try to cover it with Phoenixes. Or a Orc Warp. But the Void Ray... Um. Oh, did he hit the wrong button? Uh, nope, nope. This is probably one of those you didn't see anything sort of deals. But yeah, if you can see the void rays coming, they're a little bit less um effective. Yeah, dropping the engineering bay, hoping to get air defenses up in time. Several marines. A bunker would have been handy, but. <laughs> Uh, uh, mm. <laughs> a single void ray, by the way, is okay. It's actually not particularly powerful. It's when they get to a group of three or four, if you haven't scouted them coming, is when they can do a lot of damage. This is nice, though. It's going to pick off a single uh, supply depot, and just, it's going to drop right under the void ray. Very nice. And this, this essentially forces him out. All, he's, all he was able to do is blow up a supply depot. It's going to throw off Fade's macro, but other than that, um, I don't think you see him really doing a lot here. He doesn't have any detection for the Widow Mines. So that's going to feed into his stalker count. No, don't lose that meta back. Nice. Move those wounds back. Use that Widow Mine. Get it down. And nice. Micro. Jeez. Covered thing right on the edge of those things. Very, very good. That medivac is like being held together by duct tape at this point. Yeah, you know, we got the Oracle moving across the map now. Because why not? Ah, I can't believe that thing's alive. Now, yeah, this makes sense. Uh, the Oracle actually helps out a lot with this. It gives you the ability to detect. Unfortunately, does it not have enough energy to do that when he first comes up? Why not? In any case, um, losing one Stalker and all the shields on his Stalker. That might have been a. Come on, Cover, man. 
Not the common mistake you want to make this early on. There's the detection. Now I can take care of the second wood on my all just pulls up for me, so I think it's actually going to be good. And the beams come down on the Marines, and this is, I think, over. Yep, pretty much. I would say we have a little mine drop going down, but I don't think it's going to do much. If anything at all. Well, the Widow Mind's thinking about doing something, but he's too preoccupied back at base to see it set up and it turns out that he's probably going to that all that sentence. Kaboom. However, on the upside, we'll get to have a game five. Which is always more fun. More games equals more fun. We have the command center floating away. It's <laughs> playing with both hands this time. Alright, Covert. <laughs> Yeah, Void Ray that early. Your opponent is trying to kill you very quickly. Or, he's playing random. Doesn't think <laughs> he's us. playing random and doesn't know what he's doing. That's always fun. And, and and just enjoys people rage quitting when they see early mass Void Ray. That person usually has the gamer tag of Ghost Gambit. Um, ah. That is my one of my favorite things to do. Here's another fun thing. If you're if you've randomed as Protoss and you end up against another Protoss, um, open with any kind of Stargate opening, and when you mm -hmm. get to their base and you see that they've set up properly to defend it, or better yet, you see that they go Robo. If you kill a couple workers, run away, build three Void Rays and attack them. Half the time they can't deal with it. <laughs> they're just like, they have like three Immortals because they're ready for your ground attack, and then like, hello, Void Rays. Oh, you blow up all their Stalkers and nothing can kill you. We'll see. That was essentially my PvP from silver until the top of gold. Then I my, went to stalkers. My PV everything, more or less, is proxy pylon, three star gates, void rays. Sometimes they catch it. A lot of times they don't. Many times they rage quit. It's so much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, void rays are good. Um, Tro trolling people on the internet is awesome. Yes, especially especially people who take the game about as seriously as a pro gamer, and they are far from it. Yeah, like they ha they haven't learned to just relax on ladder, and every and essentially everything for them is the finals of GSL. Mm -hmm. So they're very intense. Mm -hmm. And you, you do something screwy, and it's amazing to watch them flip out. <laughs> That's not how you're supposed to play the game. Who said? I can build this I can build this unit at this time. I'm within the rules of the game. <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to play this way. Don't do that. I'll respond to Stardust forever. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're going to know that, A, you're into this a lot, and then, B, oh, man, <laughs> they're into that guy. Because he doesn't play how you're supposed to either. <laughs> that, that, that guy, he would do proxy Void Ray in DSL games. It was very weird and funny. Anyway, uh, it looks like we're on game five, and for game five, they have decided to go RVR. They have. It's not rest versus relaxation either, which is kind of the same word. But still. There are two things which I am obtaining this week. Yes, you are vacationing, I hear. Still casting from the screened-in porch. That has got to feel pretty good. It is amazing. What's the weather like? Uh, it was high 80s today, nice. sunny. It's probably about 70 or so right now. It's a little humid, but it's still nice. Got a ceiling fan going. Cool. The birds, thankfully, have stopped. They will not <laughs> infiltrate my microphone. <laughs> yeah, our audience wouldn't know about that, but they'll find out if they watch the interview for uh, <laughs> Death Throw versus her thing and put it up later. It's like, dude, find the mute button, find it. And he's like, I, I'm working on it. <laughs> well, see, normally I don't have to worry about that kind of stuff because it's just a little fan that's keeping my computer cool in my office. Yep. I just have to worry about my office chair squeaking too loudly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad mine actually worked on. I tried it. Half the time this thing doesn't squeak, and half the time it does. Yeah, Just like that. <laughs> okay, look over at the chat, and everything Manbon is saying is always is a little bit entertaining. 
Anyway, in the bottom right part of the map, we have currently tied with this opponent 2 2. It is our yellow Terran. I am Fade from Swanky. And in the top ish left, we have our purple Protoss. Same matchup as last time. Fun, as always. Cobra Muffin. So okay. what shenanigans shall be pulled for game five? And this is always a weird place to be in. You've played this many games against somebody in an official series, you kind of get a good feel for them. Like, both of these guys have essentially gotten games off of each other by doing funky rush stuff. So that's in the back of their minds. But I think my, my thoughts on it always have been that you should, unless you really know your opponent so well that you know this all-in that you've been hiding in your back pocket is going to kill them, you should probably just do whatever you think you're best at. Yeah. That should give you the highest chance of winning. What is interesting, the RBR has popped out the same match that we had last game, but none of neither of them know it yet. Yep. They will soon. And that changes things. I mean, I think it might not change anything for Fade, though, thanks to the wonderful powers of the Reaper Scout. But for Cobra Muffin, this is very awkward uh, as a uh, as a Protoss player when you're facing up random against a... Um, you have to deal with the reality that if you want to try a macro, you're going to have to chuck that probe across the map. It's a little bit better on two-player maps than it is on four-player maps. Four-player maps, you can risk not scouting them fast enough. And then you literally have to guess. Cobra Muffin's like, well, random didn't work, is what he's thinking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that's what they're both thinking yep. at this moment in time. Fine. And now he's happy that he can put his uh, Cybernetic score in the back of his base. <laughs> Get started with this with this setup. That's ironic. Blizzard Ultimate Troll. <laughs> the random button is Blizzard's don't, Ultimate Troll to everybody don't, involved. Don't let Blizzard see that zero. <laughs> Dude, believe me. They have so much tolerance for oh, this I kind know. of crap. Have you, have you been on the official forums? Where yes. Literally one in three people are a troll. Yes, I have. It, it is it is much fun. Oh, also, one in three people are younger than 15. Usually. By the way. I'm not kidding. They, they have various I, threads where they're like, how old is everybody? And everyone's like, 26, 26, 12, 15, 27. That's, that's what I find the vast majority of forum boards in particular, for whatever reason, attract those who are either asking a serious question or between the ages of 12 and 15. Yes. And now here's the thing. I don't want to generalize and make you think, oh, young people are all trolls. They're not. No. They're not. It's just, it, The trolls are pretty evenly split between older kids, kids, and people that act like kids. But there are also kids that don't act like kids. So it's funky. Oh, nice. Nice pickup on the Reaper there. Uh, basically, what I'm getting at, folks, is that we're all individuals at the end of the day. Age isn't going to make you act like an insane person. Holy crap, that thing is glowy. What is glowy? Mothership Core. Are you on low graphics? Yes. Oh man, you should see this on medium. I'll have it to watch the stream. Literally, literally just a... There's. It's like there's a solar flare rotating around the bottom of the mothership. <laughs> that is messed up. It might actually just be a quirk of my settings as well. I mean, I don't know if Zero C that either. And Stalker's walking up the ramp into the uh, Terran's base, going to discover that there is no natural. This should make him very nervous. Because it means that something's going to be coming his way soon. He pokes up the ramp, sees four Marines, doesn't see any Marauders. So it doesn't tell him a whole lot, unfortunately, actually. He will actually. Soon spot these two barracks. Yes. Do we have a mothership core that has enough energy? Yes, we do. Now, if he had lost that right there, that would be incredibly bad for Cobra Muffin. Yes. You need that photon overcharge to survive an attack. That, that would be, if that got picked off and I was fade, I would run across the map as quickly as possible. If he's lucky, he'll get there before the Mothership Core. Actually, if he's lucky, he's about to kill the Mothership Core. Yeah. Oh, man. Is that thing faster than Marines? It's not. Okay. And now he's going to see it. Vision. Oh, there it is. is Fade going to react? Oh, he sees oh, it. There it's, it's over plate pad, though. And well, if he can kill the, kill the stalkers, that'll give him a nice edge. 
Oh man, Just what do you think of this? Runners. This is a Terran. Uh, what, what do you think of this attack? Think it's gonna be successful? Uh, this is where I like to be. He'll hit the cannons and have to pull back, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Yep. But, but whenever you can force the photon overcharge and not lose much, um, the cannons are always kind of the one thing that I always dread when I pop up the ramp. I'm always hoping that maybe they were a little late on the cannons. Well, pretty much once you see that there, you have to get the back off of that. There isn't much else to defend, though, besides these two cannons, which are going to go down real quickly. The force fields do go into play, but there's no zealots to add in any DPS. He just runs past into the main base. Oh, this this could be bad. A lot of damage going to get done. Unfortunately, the Marines are getting picked off so much for... <laughs> Three Marauders against probes are still pretty good odds. Yes. Yeah. They were until that happened. Ooh. So he killed four workers with that. And those and and these units do have stim. Another useful. Ooh. Ooh, and slow. Oh, we got so these zealots are essentially just dead weight. And go down right now. Oh, yeah, you can't fight that kid. No. Got to back off. But now pretty much a force of only marauders. Needs a few more marines to deal with that mothership core, but for the most part, anything that pops out, any cannons, any warping units, will be killed incredibly quickly. Stim marauders. Very, very good. Expansion finally going down for Fade. <laughs> As he continues just to pump out marines. It seems like Cobra Muffin is actually very good at holding off this kind of aggression. I've seen him do yes. it quite a few times, honestly. Yes, he... The, the two cannons, those, those are helpful. You know, they, they do distract. They do do a little bit of damage. Oh, nice. But getting the pylon is also good. Uh, he's, he's cornered in the back of the base again, but he's yeah. here, so that's, that's the end of that. A little over aggressive, Oof. but he's got more coming up on the back end. Yeah. These are all just rallying across the map. He's finally starting to get an expansion, but Covert's starting to obtain a sizable lead here. We're looking at 60 supply versus 42. He's also got one immortal on the field and a second one being chrono boosted out. And I think once that joins the fray, that's that's gonna keep his bio force out. As I said early in the earlier game, when I'm doing little pushes like this, immortals make me sad. Because I know I have to switch to my normal. You, you gotta start getting your factory and your star port and your expansion. Oh, upgrades, too. And upgrades. If he has plus yeah. one, he's gonna have plus one and, and armor. Oh boy. Well, I guess he can always hope for a giant mass miss micro. This is true. That's never comfortable, though. And, and Fade's not entirely out of this yet. I guess he's going to try and contain him there for now. He's still got the contain. He can you know, get the mules, get the second base up. The big thing is, you know, he's he's got to work really hard to get his tech up. Dropping down two star ports. Yep. So for Cobra is... Muffin, he, this is the one thing that he probably needs to verify. Though I think he should be able to guess from the amount of units that's been thrown at him. He doesn't know that his opponent's natural is just so new still. Yeah. Um, if he can verify that, or again, if he's got such a good grasp on the economy of this game that he can look at the stuff that's been thrown at him and go, you don't, you either just made a natural or you don't have one. Then he knows that he doesn't need a third. And that's kind of the awkward position you're forced into here because it's 13 minutes and normally you're feeling like as a Protoss, I need a third right now. Fade is getting a third command center. Get that get that natural saturated. He's pulling back. Pulling back and gearing up many bunkers. Yeah. It that... looks like uh, Covert still hasn't, I think, started on a uh, higher tech path yet. I mean, we do have the Robo there, but no Robo Bay, no High Temple Archives. He's still just grabbing Archive. Uh, um, 
upgrades, and he's grabbing shields. So maybe Archons. Interesting move from Fade out of both the starports coming Double Raven. Interesting. Uh, that is one way, you know, I guess they... Definitely not for their detection properties, to be honest here. I don't think he's anticipating that. And he's dropping a fourth command center. They can get a decent amount of harassment damage done, and they're not bad in an army either if you use them. No, they're 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 helpful in an army. Now getting Banshees. Well, it was getting a Banshee. Guess it was a misclick. Stocking up on the Ravens. Yeah, I wonder what he's actually planning yeah. with these SCVs. This doesn't seem like a good time to ninja expand. Yeah, he's got two expansions. He's going to see this pile on. He's going to see the army. Oh, dear. He's going to try an elevator into his base. He's got enough visual coverage on this that he should be able to see it happening. He's... But... he's... Uh -oh. Yeah, yeah. The Raven, the Raven should help keep this. Good placement of the turret. Oh, he's got to no. react. No reaction at all. He's afraid to move his army away because he knows that that might provoke an attack. But he moves up, sure but there's, enough, there's three bumps. units in bunkers. There's no repair going down, and yeah, he can't hold that. So Covert yeah. often takes it 3-2. Very good. Very good series. Seems to have kicked me out of the party. Bizarre. Oh, whatever. <laughs> Well, anyway, as per the typical rules of our matches, we will be expecting Colbert Muffin to return to us for a quick post-game interview. And, however, Fade is welcome to join us as well, if he so desires. After that, we will be moving on to Otter versus Bertrand. And Otter messaged me when I created the group and was like, do I have time to take a nap? And I'm like, well, maybe. Most likely. So in the weird in the weird occurrence where we can't get a hold of her, we will probably cast the other games. <laughs> this weird weird evening that we've been having so far. Oh my god! <laughs> Is that a bit stressful oh, playing with one man. hand? Yeah, dude, I switched <laughs> to my left hand that game because my right hand started cramping up. It's really awkward to use a mouse <laughs> with a left hand. <laughs> Hey, I'm going to be right back. I'm going to just get some more water so my throat doesn't die. I was yelling at my computer again. Good, sir. Good. Go ahead, right. sir. Oh, my God. How are you doing, Zero? <laughs> uh, hey. Hey, you don't see what's going on over here, but I'm sprinting up and down the stairs and moving cars around. And... I heard about that. Heard oh, about that. my goodness. Yeah, apparently I, I parked blocking the neighbor's driveway 100%. <laughs> uh, oopsie. It was dark. You know, I was I was talking to someone at the same time and didn't didn't really connect there. So locking the neighbor's driveway makes a lot more sense than accidentally parking in your neighbor's driveway, which is what you said at first. Yeah. <laughs> is this the right house? I don't remember this house. <laughs> when I saw type that man, I was like, oh, that's good. Cool. Oh, he's breaking into someone's house and he's using their computer right now. So yeah, okay. <laughs> they must have good internet. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, and my Zero Lambda's computer. like in his computer, yeah. hooked up to a car battery, <laughs> trying to steal his neighbor's Wi Fi. <laughs> oh, man. How are you guys doing? Uh, hey, we're doing awesome. We're doing fun. excellent. <laughs> fun to cast, as always. I enjoy we're watching fun. you and uh, Fade play. Dude, he is happen. one fucking scary person to play against. Yeah, you never know we're what he's going to do. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, like, whenever he does a build, you know he's smart with it. So that's, like, I think that's the thing that's scariest. You did. Oh, yeah, and, you know, unfortunately, since we are kind of pressed for time here, I don't think we're going to we're gonna extend it out too long. So instead of asking no, about yeah, each individual sure. game, I would like to just get your thoughts on the series as a whole. Just uh, any particular things that popped to mind that you want to talk about. 
Okay, so my past couple of series against um, Fade, I hadn't really prepared for. I didn't play anything um, in order to prepare him. In the second series, he won 2-0 against me mm -hmm. uh, because he just had beautiful timing pushes and um, I didn't have any good mechanics going on. As you saw in that Zerg game there, my mechanics were, were really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and that was what ultimately uh, led to my demise. Um, but yeah, so in general, um, Protoss versus Terran's a really comfortable matchup for me. Um, you guys saw in the first series against us, he tried to do uh, like a really, really bio push against my front, and it looks really close, but the f two photon overcharges that come out of the mothership core buy you two full minutes. So that's like sort of the key. My double upgrades finish just in time. My three gateways and run one robo are up just in time. So those games where I sort of won after I pushed out past the 10 minute mark was just because I went for early tech. Um, and it seemed greedy, but it wasn't because of that one cannon or two cannons in the last game because I saw he was building Marauders. Um, yeah. Um, but then um, the other sort of side of the coin is I did some funky one base all ins, um, like in this, the. Um, the fourth game of that series, um, that's a build I usually do in PvP, but I modify it instead of getting Phoenixes out after my Void Rays, I get one Oracle, just in case he either has Widow Mines or a ton of Marines, because he's going to be like too concerned about the Zealots and Stalkers attacking his Marines, so the Oracle can actually do a lot of work against Marines. And then it gives you some temporary detection. Okay. So yeah, that's basically, that's, that's everything wrapped up, really. <laughs> quickly <laughs> yeah and i'm also sweating really hard and my throat kind of hurts because i was yelling at my computer because it was intense <laughs> okay oh man yeah uh, man bond that noise you heard i've heard that on other streams i have no idea what causes it uh it might actually just be twitch interacting with your speakers literally it's taking on it's picking up some piece of data that only some hardware can even see apparently but uh yeah we didn't cause it that's all we can tell you in any case um that build in particular was pretty interesting to me because i actually haven't seen a mm -hmm. lot of protosses do that or at least not recently so i was like oh this is pretty cool yeah. and when you said uh it was timed exactly so when the void ray came out by the way so yeah. for a second, it yeah. flashed through my mind. I'm not sure if I said it. It flashed through my mind. I'm like, did he accidentally build a void ray? Oh, oh. I'm like, that would have been kind of funny. That's what it heard. But I think when I'm like, no, this is covered. It's probably on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Definitely on purpose. Yeah, I was saying because uh, he scouted the void ray. I was like, oh, oh, shit. That would be interesting, though. Like, you, act, you think you're building phoenixes, and you look over, and you go, hmm. That phoenix is taking a while to own. <laughs> Shit. I guess I'm going for an all-in now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a fun build. I, I've been doing it forever, and I enjoy it a lot. Having the Oracle to come out of Harvest Worm was really nice. But um, really quick, uh, thanks to everybody who came out and, and watched the series. Um, I posted on my Twitter and had some people who retweeted and stuff, so uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, shout out to Fenton FS because he's watching it on his big screen TV. So that's awesome. Um, and yeah. yeah, thanks to you guys for casting. I appreciate it. Yeah, anytime, buddy. Oh, yeah, well, that's fun. Anyway, uh, looks like we're going to be moving on to our next match. Give us about five minutes to get this set up. Pretty, this is going to be Bert versus Otter, and it will be casted by Man Bond and Colbert Muffin. Woo! So you thought you were free of this guy, but he's actually going to stay. You thought the poetry had ended. <laughs> you, thought, you thought you would escape, but no one escaped. The haikus are strong. No one escaped. Yeah. <laughs> this deliciousness will find you. <laughs> From the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any anyway, guys, we'll see you in a little bit. 